is a gift I made for someone. But before I give it away, I'm going to explain how I turned, well, worked with this piece of MDF, something like that, and turned it into a clock like this. Uh, actually, before we do that, let me just show you uh, everything that it can do. So it displays the time. I wanted to be able to display the time or be able to read the time every minute. So I realized most of them have four dots in the corner, but I actually kind of like the look of these little sleeve bolts holding it in every corner. Um, because there's a temperature sensor on the clock, you can actually make it display the temperature. So right now it's 24 Celsius in the room or 76 Fahrenheit. The clock itself is in Celsius and it's just rounded. So I actually think Fahrenheit is going to be a little more accurate reading. And you can also display the number of seconds. There we are. All right. Uh, menu. First option is to be able to change the time. So you can go through the hours. Next menu option is the minutes, followed by the seconds. After that, you can set the maximum brightness. So obviously this determines the power consumption. You can set the minimum brightness, probably something you should set at night. And this is the current offset. So right now there's a little photodiode on the bottom and that's detecting the light in the room. And you can tell that by if I block, there we are. So if I block the light or if I make it even darker, you'll have to wait till the evening, I guess. But for the current offset that's reading right now, there's only one curve. There's only one brightness curve on this. So you can adjust up or down with this line being neutral for your room, how bright you actually want yeah, the clock to be. And this final line is just for troubleshooting. So you can tell whether or not all the LEDs in a single line are working. And back to the time. Easy. All right. Um, let's start tearing it apart. So right now, oops. All right, let me change it to something that won't be menu sensitive, like seconds. All right. So right now, I'm holding it in the corner with sleeve bolts. This is a MDF framed glass cover. Uh, every corner, there's a sleeve bolt, a washer, and another bolt. So those just clamp to the frame like so, screw it down from the back, and that way you don't have to make sure you crack the glass. Very important that you line up the holes with the glass so you don't crack it like I do. Uh, this is the top frame. So it's a sheet of glass with a machine finish. I had the holes drilled for me and then I printed out a word layout in this illustrator that I took to a vinyl shop and they cut out the letters for me. Now you'll notice, actually maybe see, hmm, it's a little hard to tell here. Hmm, regardless, when you're laying out the letters like this, depending on how you do it, I wanted uh, I put the minutes on top, hours at the bottom, uh, the option for past or two, and then minutes in the middle. It always says it is o'clock in the back. So when you have 20, 30, 40, 50, you, you want to make sure that's before 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And to save room on one of these, you can incorporate the end of two is also the beginning of one, so T W O N E, or for another example, 14 already has the letter 4 in it, so you don't need to double up on that word as well, it's just however you light it up. And whatever letters you have spaced over, you can do whatever you like, you can actually put a hidden message if you want. So under this layer is the diffusion layer. So this has a 14 by 14 array of LEDs. So that works out to 196 LEDs, and they are each recessed in the MDF. Whoops, I hit a button. They're each recessed in the MDF. Okay, there, back to temperature. Oh, it warmed up in here. They're each recessed in the MDF. This is a two layer of 3M diffusion uh, window film. 
I actually found it to be the most... <sighs> Anytime you diffuse light, you have to trade off between brightness and quality of dispersion. This film is used for uh, tracing or uh, light tables. So I found it to be... Actually, I tried silk, paper, wax paper, um, cookie sheet paper, same stuff. And I forget what else, but regardless, in the end, this stuff's a little more expensive. If you're going to make more than one, you can justify buying it. Or if you know, uh, if you actually, if you go to a window foam shop, they might be able to help you out with that. Help you out with that. So two layers of this. There are three capacitive buttons. And it's got a black painted rim on it because this machined edge compared to a, actually, let me show you right now. <coughs> that machined edge compared to a sanded edge ends up being flush with the edges whereas the machined edge because it's got that bevel to it you can actually see part of the frame right behind it so color that black actually while we're at it let me show you the other colors if you're gonna be making this yourself obviously you're gonna wanna pick something you like so here is a green that I did now, uh, one thing you'll notice right away is that these lights actually, let me see, the letters aren't as clear because there's a little halo around each one, and that's causing the light to bleed through the vinyl. And that's only, that's because this is a single layer of vinyl. See the color here? Whereas the blue one that I showed you before actually has a black backing. So the black vinyl is incredible at blocking light. So make sure you don't make the same mistake I did and ask them when they send it through the cutter that they adhere one layer of black to whichever color you want so that the light doesn't bleed through. And then they just have to adjust the cutter depth for your letters. Uh, this is an example in red. And let me show you a... I actually think red is my favorite color. I probably should have done that one. And here is a darker blue. And let me show you again the lighter blue, but with the black backing. So you can probably see. Let me fix that. You can see it's a lot easier to. There's a lot more contrast in the letters, so it's easier to read them. Back to tearing it down. Uh, I decided to use serial to parallel shift registers and each one of these channels that a friend of mine, Aerie, routed out. Uh, I decided to use, instead of breaking this up into quadrants and having a dedicated multiplex chip, I wanted to see, I wanted to be able to get the entire, the full brightness of every LED because this is a prototype and I didn't know exactly how bright I would need it to combat sunlight. If you watch a lot of other videos, you'll notice that some people complain they would have wished they used the brighter LEDs, and doing it this way, it's a lot more wiring intensive, but it's very easy. Uh, the PIC 18F 2525, I'm only using maybe a quarter of 20% of its memory, but each register has a master clear, a set, a shift, and an input, input line. I've got two registers. Eight each, so 16 bits of memory going out to every 14 line. So there's obviously two bits wasted. And that's, let me see, there's a center bus bar. That's a positive bus bar. So because each one of these LEDs can be driven at full power, they also need their own drop resistor. So center positive bus bar, that just made soldering easier. I have a DS3231N breakout board in the form of a chrono dot, which you can get from Adafruit, or you can go with one of these $5 eBay Chinese ones, which are going to be just as fine. The nice thing about these is if you put a battery in them, they'll actually remember the time at which they lost power. So if you want to try, if you want to put this in different spots, you don't have to, if you're programming it. 
you don't have to worry about uh, resetting the time. Uh, there is a dedicated capacitive breakout chip here. Uh, the nice thing about that is because when this is at full power, 5 volts, it's drawing about half an amp. And at low power, it's God negligible, I'd say maybe like less than 30 milliamps. So because of that power drift, the capacitance on the buttons on the front shifts a little bit. So having a dedicated chip helps me, helps with the programming, helps with the programming of having to combat that. So as you're changing through the menu, you're adjusting the brightness. You don't have to worry about the adjusting the sensitivity of the buttons. Uh, let's see what else is here. So obvious, so the channels on the side are recessed deeper than the center channel because every LED is popping through this 0.1 inch thick backing of recessed MDF. The honeycomb shape is what's giving it its strength. And oh, and you might be asking why there's all these extra black wires on the back. That's because each one of these, when I was prototyping these, the shift registers, these were the most cost effective shift registers that did what I needed to. Unfortunately, as others on different forums have discussed, they have a floating ground problem. So even though three of them off of the same power rail work fantastically, the moment you have multiple, so 28 like this, it's, I checked there isn't any noise on the line with an oscilloscope, I played with capacitors, uh, so bypass and filtering capacitors, I couldn't get a stable signal or a stable output, it was always a floating, it, was, it's, it seemed as, as if there was a floating ground. So spend a little more money. Let me read off the type, exactly which register it is. So if you decide to use them, you won't use the same one I do. I did. Let me see. All right. Can't see it too clearly, so I'll just have to put it somewhere. And that's about it. It's running off of a 5 volt micro USB. I decided to do that because if I ever wanted, depending on where I place this on the wall, I wanted to be able to just go into the dollar store, get a cable length of whatever I wanted, and I won't, well, whoever I'm giving this to won't have to worry about the clutter. Things I would have done differently. I would have used, oh, so the photoresistor on the bottom that detects the light in the room. It doesn't have to be accurate because you're just looking at general light intensity. You don't have to look at exactly light flux levels. Uh, the MDF wasn't a nice finish on the edge, so I put a white iron-on trim on it, which you can get at actually just about every hardware store, uh, which makes this MDF three quarters of an inch thick. Mm, what else is here? Things I would have done differently. Instead of using MDF, I would have gone the route and used a solid piece of oak because you can buy three quarter inch red oak at $12 a square foot. Solid sheets, not glued together, which is absolutely amazing if you have a exotic hardwood store that ships anywhere in your province. And let's see. Mm, ah, yes, and the LEDs. Now, for simplicity, I would, I, th I would go the route of multiplexing as opposed to sh using shift registers, but I'm glad I did because I'm able to justify this conclusion. So right now I'm using the brightest 5mm bulk LEDs I could find on eBay. But if you go on DigiKey, I forget the part number, I found these at a local supplier. For about half the height, these are a single watt, whereas I believe, uh, what's this, 20 milliamps and 1.2 volts, whereas this is a full watt. Multiplexing this, at worst case scenario of 1 14th duty cycle, or if you break it up into quadrants, that'd be 1 7th duty cycle. Worst case scenario, this being a lower profile, the flush mount here you can actually make this entire form frame thinner without sacrificing brightness. Unfortunately, these are 
These are ridiculously cheap and you can throw away without feeling bad about. These are a little more expensive, so depending on what you want to do, these are great. But if you're trying to go incredibly thin, you want something you can flush mount like this to save you a bit of space. Um, if you are going to go the route of MDF, I'd recommend not having as close tolerances as I do here because I ran into the problem of after this sitting around for three weeks on its own while I was waiting for the glass faceplate vinyl to be put on. The MDF actually warped a little bit from the humidity so I had to flatten it out. So if you are going to use MDF, I recommend having instead of having a quarter inch between each channel or I guess even between the LEDs on the front themselves, have wider tolerances, maybe it'll give it more structure. Otherwise, regardless, MDF is terrible to route. So I suggest making it in two layers since you can use a iron-on finish on the uh, iron-on trim on the edge or go with a solid piece of hardwood. Actually, even a, uh, even a softwood would be nice. Probably give you a, depending how you stain it, it would give you a very nice edge finish as well.